came down from Sacramento. He's the founder and director of the Eternal Life Fan Club, and he's going to show 10 minutes of radical, long, uh, radical life extension themes. Let's have a big hand for Rowan Hall. start off with a poem I wrote. Um, this is a summary of my transhumanist vision. It's called Eternal Life Pirates Never Surrender. To stay young forever and never grow old, this treasure we seek is far greater than gold. Nothing could compare with this treasure we seek. But if you want to board ship, you mustn't be weak. The hope of eternal life guides us, the brightest star in our sky. We will never surrender and never say die. Imagine a world where, where there was no final breath. A world where technology had conquered aging and death. We dream of this future, our treasure, our eternal existence. We must fight for this cause with emphatic persistence. Out from the prison of mortality, we will climb. Our life will not be a short blip in time. We persist because we love eternal life above all. We will not shrink in fear. We will break down each wall. The imaginary afterlife offers us no relief. We won't drink the Kool-Aid of wishful belief. And to think we need a God to be ethical is a big mistake. We are humans, and we can be good for goodness sake. It's time to give up the fairy tale that we should have long outgrown. Who will save your soul if you won't save your own? Prepare now for the new world ahead, to be forever alive or forever dead. The deathists are blinded and deluded. They cannot see, so don't be persuaded by their eternal life blasphemy. We know that a temporary existence is meaningless and hollow. The herd of lemmings is large, but we will not follow. We are so lucky to be alive in this universe, this vast and glorious place, <laughs> where we can create our own paradise, live forever, and travel into space. We have no salvation in nature, and no trust in theoretical gods. We must create the new world and save ourselves against all odds. Will we actually live forever? There's no way of knowing, but the possibility is what keeps us going. So my fellow eternal life pirates, let us unite. Be brave, stand strong, all hand boy, we fight! I started the Eternal Life Fan Club because there came a point in my life when I realized that I was a fan of a lot of different things, but above all else, I was a fan of eternal life. I wanted to live forever. And that's why I started the Eternal Life Fan Club, to just bring awareness to the message of eternal life and radical life extension and the possibility that we can really live forever with technology and transhumanism. Nice. And so when it comes to eternal life, the first thing that you have to understand is you have to have hope. It starts with the hope that you can live forever. If you don't have hope, you have nothing. So living forever is possible. And this is good news. So I'm telling you, there is a chance that you can live forever. It's just a chance. And a chance is a lot to be excited about. So we have no guarantees. With the words eternal and immortal, a lot of times these words can imply the inability to die. And that's not what I'm talking about. We're always going to have risks of accidents and violence and possible doomsday events that could occur in the future, like an asteroid blasting into the planet and kill us all. So we're always going to risk permanent death, even if we cure aging. 
And so the first point is that eternal life is kind of like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. This isn't like religion where it's a guaranteed ticket to eternal life. There's always going to be risks. There's no guarantees and no certainty. So I like to think of eternal life as being like a priceless treasure. There's nothing more important than trying to live forever. Because if you lose your life, you have nothing. So there's one thing, if there's one thing that's okay to be obsessed about in this life, it's living forever. People are obsessed with a lot of silly things, in my opinion. But eternal life is a good thing to be obsessed about. And eternal life, your eternal life is precious. And it's something you need to protect at all costs. Because like I said, if you lose your life, you have nothing. So the first point is I want everyone to understand that your existence is important. Okay? William Shakespeare said, this above all, to thy own self be true. So you have to ask yourself, everyone has to ask themselves, how can you really be true to yourself if you don't try to live forever? Because basically, if you're not trying to live forever, then you're just, you're submitting yourself to death. You've decided that you want to die. So think about eternity. Think about all the years, the infinite amount of years that's possible. Think about the value of that. Think about the friendships you can have. Think about the experiences, the fun. That is something to be excited about. So a lot of people think I exaggerate about the value of living forever. But I'm telling you, you cannot exaggerate about how important it is to live forever. It is literally the most important thing. So I'm telling you, eternal life is priceless. It is, it is a priceless treasure. You have to, it's like your precious treasure. You have to be really serious about it. So I started the Eternal Life Fan Club to make war on death. And aging, which is the biggest cause of death. <laughs> right? We're not going to tolerate aging and death anymore. Death is a disease. And aging is a curable disease. So aging is the great atrocity. It's the worst atrocity that's ever been for the mankind been plagued with. And we can all do something. All that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good people do nothing. Everyone in this room can do something to help the cause of bringing about radical life extension, indefinite life extension. And this isn't just a, this isn't just about a selfish desire to live forever. Because I'm telling you, I do have a selfish desire to live forever, and I think everyone should have a selfish desire to live forever. Because there's nothing more important. But it's also just because we love old people. We don't want old people to suffer. This is why this is the absolute most important cause. Because aging causes more suffering and death than all other causes combined. This is an irrefutable fact. Aubrey de Grand mentions this all the time in lectures. A hundred billion people have lived and died in the past. Think about all those people. They're dead. And you should feel really lucky that you're alive right now on the cusp of a theoretical singularity that could give you indefinite life extension. That is something to be excited about, and you should really be very excited. This is a great quote. What I'm after is not living to 1,000. I'm after letting people avoid death for as long as they want to. Aubrey Gray. I love this quote because a lot of people aren't inspired by the idea of just living to a thousand or just living to two thousand. Personally, that's not inspiring to me. I need to live forever, and I'm going to try. I'm going to live forever or die trying. And it's about it's about giving people the choice of how long they want to live. It's about ending involuntary death. Death should be a choice. It's another one of my heroes, Laura Demi. She's a biologist since the age of eight. She's been working to cure aging and help us all live forever. So we should be very excited with people like Aubrey Gray and Laura Demi on our team of eternal life, trying to help us live forever. It's another great book. Who here can imagine any 
anything worse than death. Death destroys everything. This girl, you can tell she loves life. When you love life, you're going to hate death. Why do we care about living forever? It's because life is awesome. Life is exciting. We should all be excited to be alive. So there's so many awesome things to do in this universe, and life is worth living forever. And when people say they get bored, like, they don't want to live forever because they get bored, I have pity for those people. Because if you're bored, you're doing something wrong. To quote to, to Richard Dawkins, the world is a wonderful enough place. If you're bored, you're doing something wrong. Really, there's no excuse for boredom. So there's a lot of reasons why you might want to live forever. One of my favorites is knowledge. Knowledge is a great reason. Music. Who here loves music? What about film? There's so many great things in the world. Maybe you just like cute animals. <laughs> right? Friendship. Friendship is a good reason to live forever. There's so many reasons. We love our own reasons. Maybe you like family. Romance. Romance is a big one. It might take you a long time to find your soulmate. What if a hundred years isn't long enough? <laughs> Science and technology. I'm looking forward to hyper-realistic virtual reality. I'm really looking forward to that. Fantasy. Maybe you want to see the Comic-Con convention in a couple thousand years. That'd be pretty interesting. Space and exploration. Who here wants to be alive to see the, the colonization of other planets? Who here wants to see aliens if they exist? I want to be alive to see these things. Maybe we'll discover some amazing things. Maybe you just like religion. Maybe you're just inspired by your religion. That's cool. Whatever your reason is for wanting to live forever, it's good. It maybe you want to end suffering. Maybe you want to help people like this child who had acid poured all over their face. Maybe you want to become a plastic surgeon and help people like this. Maybe you have a superhero alter ego that wants to fight crime. Maybe. You're a humanitarian. You want to compete with Angelina Jolie. That could take you a long time. Or competing with an hour in gray. That's really hard to do. Oh, paradise on earth. Okay, we're, all, we're going to create a techno-utopian paradise. And you want to be alive to see this. Right? That's the goal here. We're trying to create paradise with technology, and we can do this. So we all have our reasons to wanting to, wanting to live. And if you haven't found your reasons yet for wanting to live, I recommend that you really think Sit down with yourself and think about why do I want to be alive? What gets me excited? Because whatever your reason is for wanting to live forever, death will be the end of it. Die, we don't know there's anything afterwards. So death is death is the, the worst thing that can happen to you. And that is the ugly truth. Okay? And no one wants to talk about this because it's painful to acknowledge that death could be the end of your entire existence. It's horrible. And this is the elephant in the room, right? People want to turn their heads away from death. It's painful to even look at it. They don't want to acknowledge the reality of it because it's so horrible. We're all slaves to aging and death. And no matter how high you climb on the social ladder, no matter how successful you think you are or how, much, or how popular you are, you're still just a slave. You're going to die from aging unless we do something, right? <clears throat> The trouble with the rat race is that even if you win, you're still a rat. Okay, so being this su successful isn't going to get you eternal life. You're a dead rat. If you don't live forever, this is the end of the road for you. You're just a dead rat. So living forever is the only true success. All other types of success are impermanent. And um, I'm going to get to this in my next lecture. I'm done for now. My time's up. <laughs>